Hello everyone, this is CG Talks, the podcast where CG guys talk about CG. And here's DJ, uh, Marco, and Michal. Yeah, and today in this episode we will talk about the 2020 passing, passing year. So we'll kind of take a look back over our shoulders and reflect on whether it was a good year for 3D world CG artists or our personal experiences maybe a bit. Yeah, so this is basically uh, a December update, but <clears throat> since it's the end of the year, <clears throat> it's going to be uh 2020 update as well. Yeah, but we're just sort of going to look back on everything that came to pass this year. Uh, in I guess in the world in general, obviously, but probably a little more in the world of 3D and CG, I guess. And and this this year was sponsored by letter C, like Corona. Yeah, and... <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like like the Sesame Street. Yeah, right? sponsored video. So this is a sponsored video. Oh, letter C. That's dark. Imagine like a hundred years from now, if things go south, some some fallout. Uh, style civilization of humanity will be teaching their kids the alphabet exactly in that way. <laughs> historical mile, historical milestones. See, like Corona. See, is for Corona. Mm-hmm. And the number the virus 19. that wiped out was the. Yeah. yeah, maybe maybe that was a clever, you know, clever move for, by the developers of Corona Render Engine, you know. I think up this name. Oh no, 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 no! You know what? Come I think on, they man. have a, they have a lot of problems with that. I mean, everybody, yeah. every time you <clears throat> you want to to put something about Corona render in in the any kind of search Google YouTube, you get lots of mm. coronavirus uh, entries. It's so, like it's like yeah. Corona getting viral online. Yeah, Although I heard somewhere well. it it didn't do anything. Uh, it didn't do anything bad for the beer brand, but you know, yeah, there were some some moments when people actually started ironically drink Corona beer. But I don't. I, in general, the beer industry was hit very hard. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like with these restaurants closed and closed, and yeah, yeah. So maybe people tend to maybe drink other stuff at home. I don't know. Oh. Fruit yeah. juices? <laughs> yeah, Man. Worse, for sure. So but anyway, anyway so, let's anyway, not th- let's th- let's th- not th- start th- on such a dismal note. I think we can you know, honestly, in my opinion, I think that since we're going to talk about like uh you know, the like the, the 3D the CG world um and what's happened for it this year, I'd say that as far as that's concerned. Like in CG, it was it was pretty it was a pretty exciting year. I mean, mm-hmm. despite the, you know, all things considered. So so I I think like personally, I think I'd call this year the year of the borrow. <laughs> because like Pablo de Barro's sculpting stuff had been, I think like February this year had been no, this generally this year has been I don't need to cite like all of the instances he's he's released something awesome, um, but but he's been he's been uh, adding amazing new developments to Blender sculpting um, for if, as early as January, I think. Yeah. So and I th- I'm and, thinking and, that that is kind of like may, that might seem like a Blender bubble thing uh, talking about these improvements, but I think it kind of like waved. This this whole thing like Blender hitting in twenty I think in twenty nineteen with the tw- with the two point eighty release it was kind of like the big like Blender going big time in the three D industry and yeah kind of I think it kind of had a positive impact on the other uh, you know other software de- developments as well and this this Pablo Devaro's case kind of like fits into that perfectly if you take a look on, at how the other softwares kind of like follow up on that or yeah. at least make a parallel uh, improvement in the same area like even Push. zbrush ha- has the cloth brush right now or yeah. other stuff that mm-hmm. are kind of like 
in, it, it encouraged and speeded up changes in some other software, even like 3ds Max. And I'm not Blender user, but my impression was looking back at tw- uh, 2020 is that it was a huge Blender growth spurt. Like, I guess because it's like so. Uh, 2.81 was released some end of the year, like sometime end of November, late November 2019. But then after that, uh, like this year, it's been, um, well, we're at 2.91 now, you know. So that's uh, you can you can see how how uh, how quickly the releases have been coming in the end, and I think it's safe to say that. Each release has come with um, some really great new developments. Um, like I don't think there's been really like an uneventful release um, completely. So yeah, I mean it. It's pretty. At least for 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 the Blender community, this was a. I'd say this was a pretty great year. Mm, yeah. Yeah. For sure, yeah. there was Plus, no any other software that would develop so quickly this year as Blender. Yeah, like with the with you know like bombardment of features, updates, features. Yeah, so. and I think that uh, like like this year also like Epic released like the uh, the Blender tools that were supposed to make the transition from Blender to Unreal much easier, mm-hmm. and um, we got like we got uh, I'm I'm not sure if like that ha- no that happened this year the grants from Ubisoft the grants from yeah a lot of Facebook lot of grants and uh, the, the mixer talking... the mixer add-on that was released by Ubisoft uh, I guess I guess mixer was uh, ah mixer you mean the Ubisoft like yeah the Ubisoft one because I me- I meant like the mixer from from Quixel which was uh, yeah yeah this year I think it was this year acquired the by twenty the, well, yeah twenty twenty was released. by Epic yeah. right yeah yep so. Uh, uh, Microsoft joined the Blender Development Fund as well um, early in the year, sometime in July, right? And Facebook. Yeah, and Facebook. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot, of, so, a lot of these kind of grants. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think we need to go through everything, uh, mm-hmm. but it's yeah, that basically that's there. It's been a great development for 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 Blender in particular. Um, Hey, I, would, I would saying? like I would like to talk maybe about the Epic this time. Like um, mm-hmm. you know, once we once you men- mentioned you know uh, Epic releasing some stuff, what well, kind of like one big highlight of the I think it was in summer when they released the when they released the uh, the sneak peek preview of uh, the Unreal Engine Five. Uh, it was yeah. kind of like a big thing online at least. You know, maybe it's not a you know thing that happened that already happened in 2020 but it's kind of like you know increased some hopes for the maybe for the next year i don't know when when they plan to release it probably 2021 mm-hmm. but this kind of like <clears throat> yeah made made some appetites for for the f- future releases and they seem to kind of like continually grow on providing tools and making them making them available for as many people as possible to jump into that environment like uh, I think 2020 was the date when they released the the mixer, like jumping into competition with the with the Adobe uh, acquired uh, algorithmic suite, right? The substance substance painter and other apps. So they're kind of trying to at least provide an alternative for that, and they release it for free to people for people to use. So. It's kind yeah, of, it's, it's been a quite interesting year on the epic side. Oh that, yeah, that yeah. I mean, let's not forget the 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 crazy uh, lawsuit that happened <laughs> throughout the year. Um, yeah, I don't think there's 20, any need 20, to explain 20 that soap, any soap opera. <laughs> yeah, With Apple. Yeah, With Apple. And I think the 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 last um, the last bit of news I heard about it uh, this month is that apparently Facebook is sort of uh taking its stand next to you know with epic against apple um so i'm not sure like what that's going to what that's going to amount to later but uh yeah like i guess they're going to go they're they're scheduled to go before to appear before jury like 2021 right so 
Um, I'm not sure what I'm not sure exactly how Facebook is going to uh, how Facebook stance is going to help the case, but we'll see. Um, and that I guess is the latest uh, development in in you know in in this in this case because the the hearing I think ended ended a few months ago and there hasn't really been much news since. But um, yeah, we're we're gonna see much more of this drama unfold. Twenty twenty one. It's that yeah. basically in the Batman movie that uh, that's got me excited. <laughs> no, yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Any? What, what about you guys? What 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 do you? Uh, what are sort of highlights that that really got you tickled in at least CG related highlights? That, yeah, one one that, thing that got got me sort of tickled was was like, well, that's that's all. And that's on two on on this uh, COVID thing because it hit hit the uh, uh, the community events of the CG world hard, right? Like uh, all the conferences were canceled, and mm. I, I was already booked for for a trip to to the uh, uh, the Beacon. Um, no, no, no. Uh, I mean, it, it was even in spring the Total Chaos conference, for example. Ah, and, uh, okay. I was already kind of like packing my bags and. We 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 already had a ticket and it was cancelled. So, yeah, and the beacon was another thing that I was kind of like hoping to get to mm -hmm. this year finally. But then it was like, well, finally I got I got there. You know, being part of this online event that it turned to, yeah to be like I was watching it. Did uh, you get a comfort box? No, no. Oh, I d I didn't order it. Oh. Sadly, but well. I was, I yeah, was excited, I kind of regret also. <laughs> yeah, excited <laughs> looking at people unpacking it. Yeah. So for for sure, you know, uh, uh, for for the whole in industry, that that was a huge shock, and uh, the the Corona thing. Uh, I could see on the farm that a, a lot of big projects which we were supposed to render were cancelled. And it doesn't. It didn't mean that they, you know, it's it's end of the end of the cooperation. Just they became, you know, obsolete or they didn't fit the the current situation. So they were cancelled, and all these uh, advertising and companies and marketing uh, departments in in corporations in companies had to cancel some of the projects because they were not. They were not. They didn't fit the current situation. So we had this moment when we we also didn't have too much to do on the farm because a lot of this stuff, you know, like a co company who's who's working on some 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 construction development. Well, maybe we'll not do that, or we'll maybe we'll not do that this way. So we don't need these visualizations. So there was that period of 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 of. of of a pause where nothing was happening but after that new projects were launched but they were already you know um um th they were already adjusted to the new situation with corona so we were afraid that this is going to be very hard way and it was uh, yeah and it was but it was not like cancel and nothing like nothing happened just 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 some stuff had to be stopped some project had to be cancelled because of the new situation there was some period of adaptation and then another projects uh, were started because you know when there's a crisis there is that opinion that when it's a crisis the competition is getting harder and stronger so marketing and advertisement i'm sorry <coughs> Marketing and ad advertisement has to be also uh, pushed to the limit to to win this uh, competition in this these very difficult uh, times. So after this time of pause, we started to get new new projects, and it kind of went back to normal more or less. Maybe 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 now now it's really go in December. It, it's I mean the Christmas is coming, so there's a lot of Christmas uh, projects. So now oh, so it's has, got is the farm been pretty back. busy lately. Yes, it's it 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 is bu it is busily it is busy lately. Um, 
um but also always before christmas it's busy because yeah. there are a lot of christmas commercials stuff like that i think we'll there was see... this one time when i i took a peek at like our our you know our uh our support um like list i guess of 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 things that needed to be checked and it was empty mm-hmm. so i was like wow like nothing to fix like really that's well that's 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 actually a good news i mean the best yeah. the best uh, situation is when the queue on the farm is very long and the farm is no you know, like working 100% but yeah, the list of issues to fix mm-hmm. and the stuff to check is is clean. This is yeah, this is so it's exactly like, perfect situation. Yeah, like really good to know. I I just assumed that okay, maybe there's not much of a of a queue. Like maybe it's going to be. I thought like the holidays would be a little quieter this year. It's um, better to have a look at the queue. I know. But, yeah, but I oh, haven't oh, really. Every time when the queue is bigger, there's more work for farmers. So yesterday and I think three days ago, I, 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 uh, I helped some. I, I helped some of the farmers with with talking with customers. It's just statistic, like you have five more, five times, five times more frames to render, five time, times, uh, uh, more jobs to render. Then then there's going to be more guys on chat and asking right, about this right. and that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. ho- I so so hopefully the next year with the vaccine is coming, it's going to I really hope it's going to stabilize. I mean, there's a lot of guys who said that there's never, you know, the the world is never going to be the same. Uh, I don't know in what way. Actually, I bought a book, Apollo's Arrow. I've heard it on Joe Rogan podcast about the COVID and what's going to, you know, like bring for next years. So I, I haven't read it yet. But hopefully, you know, the business is going back to to normal. It's going to people are going back to work. Um, businesses are op- opening again, and and you know we are very much dependent as a farm uh, on this. We are like on the end, on the final, like the part of this food chain. Mm-hmm. So so if uh, if. Uh, if if advertisement companies visual, visualization companies are not doing well for sure we are not doing well as well so yeah. hopefully the next but year will but, be but, but what you said what you said about 2020 like it was like kind of a shock at first and then it's it turned like people ter- tended to find kind of like their own way about it uh, mm-hmm. and the business was still running it was you know you can see that some some parts of the of the world got really boosted by this, you know, people being locked in in their homes, like I guess, like you know, e-commerce stuff that yeah. kind of probably yeah. Bl- yeah. blew up. You know, everyone's suddenly using you know this remote uh, conference software. Like I, I guess it mm-hmm. was it was Zoom that had this kind of astronomical yeah. Yeah. increase of users in the, in a few months. So like you know, some companies got kind of like the the development boost. That was mm-hmm. really hard to handle, I guess, for even for the management there. Yeah, the best, but, the, the you know, Amazon, Amazon grew a lot, and the best, you know, like a sign that this, this, this all, all thing, Corona thing, is over was when Jeff Bezos <coughs> dumped like I don't know eight billion worth uh, stocks back to the uh, to the to, uh, to the stock market. Mm. So he knew that this is not going to grow. I mean, like everything is like going back uh, to to the normal situation. I mean, I'm so I'm sure that a lot of people will, you know, a lot of CEOs and you know companies directors whoever will 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 think, what why 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 the hell we were actually meeting personally three days in a week when we could make this quick zoom call and that, that was enough. Um, yeah, actually but, I'm hoping yeah. if anything changes, I'm hoping people kind of re-examine, you know, I mean, it, it's obviously it's not applicable for every sort of business or every sort mm-hmm. of like enterprise, but I mean, working, if more people work remotely, like, uh, you know, if you could anyway, I think it would be overall like, uh, I mean, the, the, 
uh, emissions wise that that could be really good for the you know like that could be really good for the environment and it might yeah. also be yeah. really good I've, for I've heard it I don't know some, kind of, on some kind of podcast by a mm-hmm. guy from LA that was yeah. mentioning that it it was kind of like really shocking or like kind of awesome to see the whole AA, LA areas finally you know be be smog free for a period of time because of the yeah l- lack and, of and weren't you guys like was it you guys like you like you you started seeing geese like or, or was that in it, it, italy or something in italy for sure in venice they started to see dolphins in the venice uh, yeah see but, who the but hell doesn't want to see dolphins i've seen uh, out, i've seen uh, uh um i've seen a interview with a doctor in poland and he said that when there was that lockdown in these months there was like 50% less people dying of asthma, of strokes. Of course, there was corona, but apart of the corona, strokes, you know, like uh, uh, asthma attacks, you know, heart attacks was, was 50% less. And the, for, in his opinion, the whole, the whole reason for less people ha- having this either dying or having these very severe, severe conditions and going to hospital was the clean air and that's it mm-hmm. so yeah i mean it 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 made people aware like what they what they are losing you know it's it, even me i mean I, I i live in the center of the city it's not polluted in the worst way in poland but it but it is so when there was this this uh lockdown after like two weeks three weeks i went out and it was like jesus i, I feel like I'm walking in the park not like walking uh, on, on the on the on the uh, uh, pavement next to the street and yeah hopefully there'll be some decisions made or some you know hopefully it will not get just back to how it was and that's it hopefully i mean I'm yeah. not very don't trust people so much when it comes to this kind of decisions, but 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 it showed how much people lose. Like I think it also in India, like th- there were these very polluted areas, and finally they oh yeah, in India there was that city which was had the smoke all the time, and after the lockdown they could see uh, some mountains which were very far away from the city and they were not seen from the city for decades like for 60 years nobody could see wow. these mountains and after lockdown they could see them so and it was a normal view before that you know all this uh, motorization all, all this all this all this stuff when there were no cars it was a normal that this city has a view on the mountains but mm. when with the pollution it, it was over so some some you know people who were born born in that in these times could see these mountains the first time in their lives so yeah it's that's it's a wow. huge proof what 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 difference does it, it makes mm-hmm. yeah so so that like the remote work i guess it's it's a um, you know thing uh, that seems seems to be kind of like developed in 2020 like we had at least l- the lack of being prepared for that working remotely for some time everybody already. tested this solution right now so yeah they cannot tell you know there are people who have to work uh, from home because they are disabled or they are have very you know like young kids whatever and uh, or there are single parents it's uh now nobody can say that well it's not possible to work like that i'm sorry because the the whole companies work like that for for almost a year yeah and the, i think like the big take- takeaway from that is that many people who are kind of very doubtful about this like can it be even productive or stuff like a lot of companies really had the, the playground to test it and you know i think that the tests were mostly positive like from what i've heard around you know from people who are just like starting because we we had the luck of of doing that for a few for a few years before corona hit but 
and, and it's it's working right for us yes and, i mean yeah i done. personally I, I, you know I, i've read these articles about people hmm, how to learn how to work remotely this is hard this is i don't know this is weird this is different and really? all, all, five tips how to work remotely and not lose your mind and for for me and i think for other guys who work in guardfam.net it was nothing changed nothing nothing changed man nothing yeah. yeah it was really like yeah it was sort of the same deal yeah so it's just the, there's just this this looming you know uh like dread but i mean yeah the only tough. thing that changed in my life was that i was going shopping less often to to, to have a less risk of contracting the virus so yeah. i was making big like once a week big uh big you know uh supply of food and that's it but other than that it, uh, everything was the same yeah well i got i I got into cycling recently just because uh the streets had been you know like it, it it was easier to take up the yeah like you say like the less pollution and everything and mm-hmm. um it seems like a lot of people have, have slowly been adopting it as well mm-hmm. like there have been there are much more people who seem to be uh it's getting cycling. around with with bikes yeah like and, and you yeah, know instead of cars and uh, yeah, that's amazing. I really like. I'm hoping that that's a trend that kind of doesn't die off. Um, yeah. So you know, when it comes to CG, I uh, we had this idea to make a project together, uh, re- all remotely. We haven't yet, you know, started it, but the the idea is there, and I think we'll do it sooner or later. Yeah, that's kind of like a New Year's New Year's uh, resolution for, for yeah. 2021. <laughs> kind of late because maybe uh, you know when the vaccine is going to be, uh, you know, uh, launched, uh, there will be less less reasons for doing that this way. But just to check how it works and and uh, if if that way you can create something cool and more or less uh you know in a, in a efficient way that's worth trying for sure for sure yeah. besides I, i've always kind of felt that that wasn't even really a hurdle i mean um we had a customer a, a few years back that made an adaptation for one of terry pratchett's uh short stories uh, based in the disc world universe so i, I don't know if mm-hmm. like uh anyone there's anyone you know there are any terry pratchett farms uh fans uh the troll bridge listening right now yeah troll bridge and they did that uh completely remotely apparently i mean they 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 sourced uh they had a way of like dealing with the high turnover because you they had openings up and you if you wanted to help you could volunteer you and then you'd be evaluated and put to like a you know like a a department that could really use your skills your skill level um then you would have these tasks and if you uh you can finish your task and bow out um or you can keep going and if, if for some reason a task is dropped like they they had a way of like just funneling you know like the the like people coming in like really efficiently telling them where to go at least that's sort of the the idea i got from when we had like a conversation with them about it but it was really cool like i i thought that you know it was a really impressive film and to think that like you know like this was made by like a team of people who like had never even uh probably ever seen each other physically ever you know from different parts of the world and it looked like a pro pro professional production like for yeah whatever netflix hollywood whatever but actually you can even see this uh, in our on our website on on our blog there is a case case study and also on our garchfam.net youtube channel there is that at least part of this movie so it, it looks it looks really cool Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, one more thing that was kind of like, uh, at least for for me, a new thing that's uh, that's appeared on the horizon is the whole crypto art thing. Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of like being 
starting to blow up i think on online like as a topic picked up yeah can you artists. tell us about can you tell us about that a bit like honestly i've, I've heard I've, I've heard of it i'm not really sure i like i always thought it had something to it was more of like you you can buy digital art yeah, and invest in it a, like that, you would that's exactly oh, okay. what it is it's kind of like the way uh, i think we, you know Cheyenne mentioned it in in the in the episode with us uh, it's kind of like a way of uh, out uh, like giving a certificate certificate of authenticity to like a digital artwork like that that this is the original and like backed by the author like the mm-hmm. uh because it's using blockchain it's kind of like a proof of of this being original and uh, right now like it's, it's it's blowing up also because of the latest uh, uh thing by people like he he uh made an auction of all of his artworks like from the dailies or i don't know if all of them but a lot of them and he like uh yeah made made an auction online with these certificates and also prepared some kind of a uh, pack, packs with even even samples of his hair it's kind of funny you know this it's like this medieval you know uh mem- how, how do you call them you know these uh pieces of cloth of a saint oh, or oh, yeah. what if something what like if that? what if people was actually bo- like bald what if you bought a piece of hair then you realize that people was bald <laughs> and then not. you wonder like oh that wasn't hair from his head <laughs> that was all just yeah, yeah a deep fake <laughs> Yeah, but generally he sold the, like the copy with a display, like a digital display, and this like you, you got a box packed with uh, things. But generally, it's, it's kind of like a digital artwork signed by this blockchain thing. And yeah, the f- funny thing is that it was it it sold so well that he mm-hmm. he kind of like got rich in a in a few minutes, right? Yeah, like a really big sell sell out of of his artworks. So kind of so, like mo- monetizing on his uh, his. Uh, popularity so, online so basically like if you if you you only one purchase can be made for that piece of for that for the certificate you can have obviously it's like you you can you can easily get like a soft copy of any any digital art from yeah, art station or whatever but yeah you, you buy the, the certificate original. yeah so you have the, like as a digital collector you have the certificate that says you are the sole you are now the sole owner of this piece of work that you can mm-hmm. later on sell as it valuates. Is that is yeah. that it? Yes, exactly. exactly. It's like exactly. you have the, uh, I don't know how it's called because there is uh, two kinds of rights, right? The, the author's rights, which are never sold because you did it. So you cannot say I did it just by buying it. And there is that uh, monetary part, the ownership. Uh, and this this one you can sell exactly as the same as you sell uh, physical you know like real images paintings and th- there was that problem with digital uh, works that they didn't have this uh, or uh, they were lacking this originality proof and you know if you buy a painting then you have it at your home and it's, it's yours and the, the that that um, crypto art think kind of solved that problem that you can actually buy a digital art and have it as a original in your collection or whatever you want to do with that it's pretty neat i imagine that it'd be like an easy way to sell ip as well ip right? like any intellectual pro- property basically like if you yeah. decided to you know if mm-hmm. you decided to for example create a an extensive uh lore bible of something yeah, that whatever. might event that uh, that you know like I, a game company might want to buy the rights to or or a film you know then you like you could that might be a really easy way right like they 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 would have to buy the one time certificate yeah but, a, okay a, but, a script a book whatever like yeah you yeah. have to interesting so then the like it it okay so like 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 actual like like uh, physical art mediums the price for the certificate goes up based on the on the popularity i guess of the artist right yeah and popular i mean basically for collectors like i mean yeah. the, the 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 normal market people like it they, they are going to buy it if not then yeah then yeah they're going to pay more you can you can sell them with uh, cryptocurrencies because some of this market are 
especially created for cryptocurrencies. And for what I understand is that you know in some countries this is, is this is difficult to to buy something with your cryptocurrencies. So I'm sorry. So so it's a good so it's a good way to to spend your invest your your crypto you know uh your crypto money to into something yeah yeah so guys wow. maybe i will since we talk something about uh, this year maybe not in a huge detail but we mentioned a lot of stuff i think we didn't mention the 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 you know the development of of the um, procedural uh, procedural workflows, artificial intelligence, self-learning yeah. algorithms. The, the AI, because there's yeah. a lot of stuff out there right now, and it's getting more and more powerful as we as we watch it online. Like just art breeder is adding more and more. Uh, yeah, I think like features. It's, it's, it's not only that the the algorithms are developing because they, they they've been developed for a number of years now. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm seeing like 2020 being the year when those AI and like machine learning and you know neural network technologies they're kind of like coming down to our households in yeah the, finally in they a, got in, in the a form of, of tools right yeah so in this in this way this year is 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 uh breakthrough because th- that all hit the surface of uh of w- where where just normal people or you know like cg artists can really start to use it and check it and and and, and test it it's not theoretical, theoretical thing. It's not like a scientific lab thing. Yeah, it's, it's, you, can, uh, you can just play around with this, these new toys. Yeah, and I've just I've just recently be... like uh, <clears throat> finished a video about one of these kind of services. It, it's called uh, Deep Motion it's on deep, deepmotion.com. dot uh, mm-hmm. They're kind of offering a free tier for now trial like a tri- free trial of an online service that's doing an automated uh, motion capture so this you just record yourself moving mm-hmm. dancing whatever playing out a role and uh, it's making uh <coughs> it's it's like der- deriving some uh, motion capture data out of this and you receive a rigged and animated s- skeleton like just mm-hmm. just like you you have in mixamo or stuff like that but you just can interactively create it, uploading your video. You create and it's this working. Yeah, this it's cre- cowboy, it's working. right? Uh, Character. Yeah, I've I've just yeah re- downloaded this rig and linked it to a pre-made character, and downloaded from the Blender Cloud, and it was, yeah, working pretty fine. You know, this yeah. was just like a short test, and I, I'm sure you can like have better results if you just dive into it more deeply. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of already like working. It's not perfect. It has its you know quirks and stuff. But it's already kind of a usable tool. And I'm sure that it yeah. will be polished in a few years. Uh, you know, super be... exciting stuff. It's kind of like all the all the motion capture uh, you know uh, gear that you need to buy. It's it's getting obsolete because you can just you know use these algorithms to do the work for you. You know, and I was it... thinking about practical use. So one practical use at this level, which I saw your uh, animation, would be to use them in animatics, where you don't have to polish the animation yet. And the second thing is animating crowds and like these more distant yeah, plants. Yeah, ima- where... imagine uh, or imagine you know game dev where you have to uh, have you know a lot of characters, just like my, even the, like the second second um, plan characters or mm-hmm. like a yeah. battle <laughs> of. Uh, medieval battle nobody's going to to analyze every movement just just the film yeah, exactly and even if you have a rough you know rough starting point of for an animation it's probably easier to just clean it up or even remake it while having a good 3d uh kind of uh, reference material mm-hmm. for you to work with Get besides like jump start f- filmically speaking if we're, gonna, if we're talking about like medieval battles or similar things i mean if you think about it, like how often do you actually see like a full frame bit of motion, you know, like mostly it's a montage of like two upper bodies, like clashing into each other, the occasional like sword swiping through the air, some you dude know, falling, like an, even, like an anguished face on the ground, you know, it's like, even it, if, it, yeah. You, 
even, there's a lot you can do with camera work and even in normal movies movie. like Johan Johan uh, Dark uh, there was that movie and there was that battle battle scene of the siege of some castle and on these more distant planes the the some some you know some some uh, knights were trying to take the castle and of course you wouldn't pay attention to what to what they do but if you do if you did you'll see that they are making like a loop mo- movements which are completely stupid like there's a guy <laughs> who's basically banging his sword against the wall of the of the of the castle and stuff like that and the second one is just jumping maybe and maybe he he just said you know he just had some kind of a nervous breakdown during <laughs> <laughs> stressful battle just jumping yeah. Like, but man. no stuff like that. Just jumping and must and of spend course, this time playing Counter Strike instead of going to actual <laughs> battle school. So, so you know, but you didn't pay attention because it was somewhere in the background. So it was making that movement of 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 their guy in, their <coughs> guys fighting there. So yeah, so I think with this with this software, even of this level of of. of of the test which you do which you did it would be enough to make some bunch of orcs you know standing on the other <laughs> side doing of the, squats and of the yeah. river yeah so you know I, maybe i will mention some stuff on the farm because on the farm it was also yeah yeah let's, uh, a, a big let's hear a big year so basically we had this <clears throat> we had this problem with <clears throat> less customers and stuff like that so we had more times to more time to to you know just take our dust covered uh list of future features and we started to implement them uh because there was more time for that and i think that we ad- added a lot of cool features and i'm I, i'm not going to even mention more of most of them i'll just mention let's say quoted quote, quote and quote game changers these features which really change something on guard from dot net not they're just this you know little helpers and stuff like that so so oh yes yeah, so the first thing is that this year we had 10 years anniversary so we are becoming teenagers we are the whole team is starting to wear leather, leather jackets yeah, and we revolt we, yeah revolt we 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 don't we think that our parents are lame and so so we added more much more cpu nodes and we have now 20000 cpu cores um and we have nodes with uh between 64 and 256 gigabytes ram so you can fit your scenes even the very heavy ones with like i don't know forest pack uh on these nodes and the thing that is very important and i think it's it's the biggest change for the customers is that we change the nodes limits for cpu rendering so for example on high priority you get 300 nodes per job and ram up to uh 240 gigabytes on medium you get 150 nodes per job and on low to on low priority you get 100 nodes for all jobs on your for all your jobs on low combined and for comparison a year ago we had 10 nodes for low 40 nodes for medium and 80 for high so this is much i mean it's like uh huge huge uh, <clears throat> difference so yeah. for the same price you can get several times more of uh, computing power yeah also <clears throat> yeah like, I, like from a blender user perspective one <clears throat> one big thing for me was uh, the mm-hmm. gpu rendering yeah also i'll also just this I, I will mention it in a moment we also added one uh, node which has uh, 512 gigabytes uh, ram and it's because sometimes even 240 gigabytes ram is not enough for some scenes which is surprising but it sometimes happens so we have this node 
to render your scene even on, on this one note if it's so extremely heavy and sometimes to test if, if your scene is filing on the uh, two, um, uh, 240 gigabytes nodes uh, to check if this is uh, the, the wrong thing and of course we added cloud GPU rendering so we have now 50 nodes with eight Tesla K80 uh, cards with 12 uh, gigabytes of VRAM. So in total, you have uh, 400 Tesla K80 GPU cards, and you can render Redshift and Blender GPU cycles on these nodes. So we support Redshift for all the software like 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, um, and uh, as far as I know, I think we are the cheapest Redshift farm on the market. With and and the, and the distance from us to other c competitors is very big, and and it's not even you know like our opinion, but uh, I think it was on uh, Cinema 4D or Blender Artist. Somebody took time and tested all the farms, all the GPU farms, and when it comes to the you know the price uh, compared to the speed offered and we were we we had the best result and then there was long time nothing and then the rest of the competition so so this offer is very good um yeah. and by the way redshift redshift is already coming to blender like it's it's officially oh, yeah. a beta but yeah it will like in 2021 surely it will be available yeah, so so we render right now cycles for Blender, both GPU and CPU, and it's automatically set on on GPU on or CPU now. It's uh, depending on the settings in your scene. Our our system automatically discovers that, and <clears throat> we have the older uh, GPU system, which is very popular as well. It's called Xestop, and in case of Xestop, we you don't send the scene with the plugin render beamer and you don't manage it, it in web manager like in cpu rendering we just rent uh, powerful powerful gpu servers for the time of usage and we added a lot of more servers and and uh, cards to this service so right now we have uh, 12 servers with 10 uh, gtx 1080 Ti uh, cards on each with 90 gigabytes VRAM and costs uh, six dollars per hour. Um, also, we equip our newest mother, which is the that image you are using, uh, the virtual Windows image which you are using for for to con you connect to this and you install the your software there. Uh, we added the NVIDIA patch that allows OpenGL acceleration while using uh, RDP, which is the connection to the to the servers. So <coughs> it helps with working in viewports. I mean, in general, these servers are not meant to work on your scene uh, remotely, but with a little better viewport performance, you can do some easier do some tweaks. In your scene before final uh, final rendering. Also, we um, we have uh, six uh, servers with Tesla V100 cards. There are eight cards of this type on each server, and this is because I mean they are very uh, efficient, but also it's a good solution for guys. For software which doesn't support 10 cards like on 1080 Ti. So, for example, uh, Octane uh, works well with 10 GPU cards, but as far as I remember, Redshift and some other software like I think 3ds Max uh, allows works only with 8 cards. So, using them, this software on 1080 Ti with 10 cards was kind of like, a, you know, you are losing. You're paying for 10 cards, but you are using only eight. So, so we created this eight uh, Tesla V100 uh, nodes with 60 gigabytes VRAM, 
and we have six of them uh they cost uh, eight dollars per hour so they are cheaper now they cost uh, ten dollars per hour and also we uh, in general you know the, the the speed of rendering is one thing the second thing is that this, there's the bottleneck of uh of, of vram in gpu rendering still it's a bottleneck and um so we added eight servers with tesla p100 cards with 60 gigabytes vram so this is the same as the v100 but they cost they are slower and they cost uh, 6.5 dollars per hour so they the cost is very similar to the basic setup of you know these 1080 ti cards the difference is, is that they have 60 gigabytes ram and also both of them like v100 and p100 they support nvlink which is the feature of uh, some of the uh, uh, nvidia cards where you can um, couple your cards uh, join them join them in couple and add their vram so with this with this uh, feature you, you could have 32 gigabytes of vram on on on, uh, on the server uh, i haven't checked it yet i don't know how many customers use it yet but this there is that possibility in the documentation and it's it's uh marketed that way that it works that way so you can try this out and um yeah all servers uh on access top we upgraded ram and now they all have uh, 256 gigabytes ram so they are more um they are more the performance is more and if you are using the out of core uh, feature of your gpu software render engine it helps a lot with out of core um so yeah um another thing is uh mm, yeah, we, we added a lot of options to web manager and just quickly we added frames pre preview so you can check your frames, how they render. And uh, I mean, with all formats, even EXR or CXR, uh, we added show progress function in, in jobs panel. So you can open the real time progress panel of the frames by just selecting the, the the jobs so you don't have to ask us to check on the notes or in our queuing system what's the progress you can do it yourself uh, in web manager um you can also download renders via web manager just clicking web manager to 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 trigger the download uh, download uh, feature and also we have an auto -sub submit feature so basically this is because we had customers especially those who rendered still images they could you know like render 30 still images a lot of cameras from the same scene and when you submit your scene to the web manager with the submit window uh, you have to set it separately every time and it was time consuming and it was annoying for for artists who would render a lot of these scenes so the auto submit feature uh, works that way that you just set your template of settings it's saved there and then you just upload the scenes from your from your 3d application like to the 3ds max and they are automatically added with this uh, preset settings to to the farm so it's much faster and it's for production it's much more handy um also we have a very cool thing which is a new thing a video create creation feature so basically if you right click on your renders you can you, you get like a setting of of a new job for creating a video and you can choose your codecs extensions frame rate pixel format all the stuff that is uh, um uh, needed to create the video it's mostly meant for after effects artists who render their scenes to frames but they don't like to download frames because they have to export a video and 
you know, 3D guys usually are m- much more uh, used to work on on uh, sequences of frames, and people who make videos in uh, After Effects they they would prefer to get the ready video. So this is mostly for them, but you can use it as well. Um, and another thing is that in Render Beamer, so so far when you rendered your scene, it was downloaded that to download. Uh, folder which was set in render beamer and it, you, could, you could set it everywhere but a lot of people when they are rendering scenes locally they have the renders folder inside of this project next to the scene it's like a normal practice so we added this feature that you can turn it on and let's say if you are uploading the scene i don't know x it's rendering and the frames are downloading downloading to the renders folder next to the the scene x in this folder so it's more natural when it comes to your workflow it's it, it's it, it's more similar to the normal workflow with 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 creating the render folders for for your renders um and yeah i mean um a lot of stuff like auto deployment for anima for 3ds max and and cinema 4d which means that we act we automatically set the your, your version of anima on the notes rendering um after effects we develop the plugin a lot it's much more stable and covers much more uh possible setups um we have new user guides which i you know uh, i i encourage you to to read because they are very detailed so if if you have any you know um you are confused about anything you can you can read them and lots of lots of other uh, updates and features but i decided that that's it because i would have to read them for another hour lots of little things which which are really changing the 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 workflow like you can see the whole the whole uh mm, the whole queue of the farm but also the queue above you above your jobs but also the queue as the whole the number of frames the number of jobs so you know how how busy the farm is and you can make a be- better decision which uh, priority to use so this kind of uh, we have a lot of this kind of upgrades so i would just skip them to not bore you and yeah and as always we are on chat 24 7 uh to help you so if you have any questions any problems just open the chat and instant leaders are going to be a wrangler who's just overlooking the farm and is he'll be happy to help you and answer you all the questions so so that's it for 2020 i guess yeah, I guess I guess we All missed right. uh, we missed one thing uh, in terms of uh, 3ds Max world. Mm-hmm. We were talking about features for 3ds Max users, uh, which which was maybe well, like for smaller smaller uh, teams or entities, uh, it was kind of an important thing, like the indie license that they introduced this summer. I guess it was it went worldwide. The we, indie uh, license for 3ds Max. Yeah, exactly. So like a cheaper tier for small entities using this. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing that it's it's kind of like uh, related I mean, to the to the whole situation on the market and like maybe mm-hmm. Autodesk trying to also cater to more more like indies, smaller studios or or individuals as well. Yeah, so so this is from the customer side, right? That this is easier for them to use 3ds Max. Mm-hmm. And buy exactly, it. Mm-hmm. exactly. And uh, one other thing that was kind of a recent uh, thing, it was the uh, the <coughs> the project. It was called Project Levina by Chaos Group. Yeah, it turned to be uh, Vantage called Vantage. Uh, it's it's a tool for live previewing your V Ray scenes, mm-hmm. and it was I think it was released recently. Or is it in, in still in beta? I'm not sure. But it's I haven't kind of, checked it yet. I just heard about it everywhere. Yeah, but it's available to to try out. And I think if you register there, you can have a license for a whole year for free. 
if I don't if I recall correctly. Uh, but generally, it's kind of like the trend. I, I maybe wanted to, to talk about the render engines, it's especially for the ArcVC. You shared with us this uh, survey that was done by CG Architect, mm-hmm. like the popularity of render engines in this um, passing year. And there were kind of some interesting trends, like still V-Ray, V-ray holding super strong. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure that the this kind of review is a little bit biased because it's uh, mostly a, aimed at uh, ArcVis artists. In yes, general. yes. Mm-hmm. So this is a kind of uh, a biased review by ArcVis artists, not not generally in the 3D world usage. But like V-Ray and Corona was were kind of like uh, holding the the main podium and then there were Lumion. yeah but, but then there were lumion enscape like this this easy to handle real time applications for for viewing architecture and also unreal engine climbing up steadily i think this you know lumion and this is the sketch up in the rhino users who mm-hmm. who are doing the arcvis you know for like architects but yeah, also, be. I noticed that cycles is uh, year year after year is going up. I mean, you would have to add cycles to Ivy and uh, to to really have this, you know, idea how much the Blender is more and more used uh, uh, for ArcVis. But it is; it's it's mm-hmm. growing from year to to another. Yeah, exactly. But I guess like this real time thing is kind of still growing, growing, and it it will grow because the technology is also catching up and allowing for a lot more. Like uh, these are all, all new GPU possibilities of real time ray tracing and stuff. I guess it's going to just go into that direction. Like I guess we are kind of all all uh, accustomed to using the real-time preview in the render engine anyway but it's going to be i think even a step forward like working fully real-time it's, that's the future yeah i've seen how you did the scene one of the scenes uh, with uh, preview from cycles and it was i really env- envied you to that you have this yes i was doing it with just regular v-ray Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you you have the I, I guess you know there there is this real time V-Ray version, but it didn't get that popular. I guess I, I'm not sure why, but it kind of like for me that was the restriction of my of my hardware, mm-hmm. which I need to update quickly. Yeah, or maybe wait a bit <laughs> because because the because of the hype of some new technologies coming in and then they are so expensive like the new nvidia cards right now you know but you I, can tend to th- see, I tend to see people like waiting patiently like some people jump into the bandwagon as soon as things appear but others are kind of like you know lurking and waiting for the prices to drop but you can wait like that for years <laughs> yeah <it> was, <laughs> when is the right when is the right moment to invest in yeah hardware oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's pretty low now, but it it could be lower. <laughs> but you know, in a month they are going to release a new version, so this one will be lower. But then the new ones are great, so I will wait I'll, like uh, six months until they will go lower. And so, mm-hmm. I don't know. You, you need to have a make to make a decision. Yeah. Maybe buy a, a cheaper card, use, used one that's, or something like that. That's that's the yeah the, the questions that you ask yourself in the end of the year. Like, is this the right moment to use an online cloud rendering service? Yes, it is the right time. <laughs> right. Yes. yes, yes <laughs> it so it's always the right time, right? We have such uh, a long queue right now that it proves that it is. <clears throat> oh. So then maybe it's not the right moment because the queue is already <laughs> <laughs> pretty full. You know, you might you might get your frames like you might your javas might start rendering like well into the next year already but every every time something like that happens we add more hardware so mm-hmm. so yeah know. that's and how we roll we have we have various uh, priorities so so we can also speed it up 
Yeah. So I so guess may- maybe maybe to end this uh, up, let's 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 make some you know wishes for the next coming year. Like what, yeah, what are what are you hoping for? My resolution is that I want to learn substance. This is my resolution, and mm-hmm. then I'm not going to add anything more because to, if you want to learn substance, substance, I guess there's no better way than just watching uh, Garage Farm Academy. Yeah, I will. <laughs> channel oh. there's some nice videos by i know there so yeah is... i'm thinking i'm thinking of uh yeah getting more into the animation thing like it's it's kind of tempting me like i've been trying to do some some stuff on that this year yeah and also some some 2d art like i'm i'm kind of like tempted on on mixing that these two worlds because it's I'm kind of interested in that since you know since being a you know young young guy when I was starting to draw and you know just mixing this traditional media stuff that I'm kind of doing in my spare time and yeah mixing those two up you know 3D and 2D and especially that me being the blender guy I kind of have the tools under my fingers right the, like with the grease pencil thing developing so nicely well i'm i'm just hoping to get something creative out of this in 2021 and marco uh i yeah it's my <laughs> goals are kind of somewhere along those lines as well as what dj says but mm, i'm not gonna I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> Basically, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make any declarations because I don't know that I just that it, they just don't. It, it's not my. It, it does, it's not my thing really. Like it doesn't really work for me. Like mm-hmm. it just. I know what. I'm, like I'm. I'm pretty much already doing what I want to be doing, and I just need to keep doing that. Basically, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like the same with me. Like. Already started doing some things along this, those lines. So just hoping for that to grow more in the 2021. Yeah. For example, I've, I started playing around with the Luxco render recently, like checking out for for doing ArcVis in Blender, and it seemed to do like a really fine job. Like the first test render that I did with it was kind of promising. So yeah, also hoping to do some more things with it. Especially that it's supported on our farm, like I've tested and rendered it on on the farm, and it worked. So, hey guys, I need to go. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, so I guess we should we should call we it should here. Uh, so again, basically that was it. Yeah, like that. That's basic. Um, that's basically all of the interesting things that have happened, at least at least to us um this year and uh we know it's been a pretty challenging year overall but uh we hope you guys have been holding up all right and hopefully we can look forward to a year that uh would be better than this one in any yeah. shape way or form happy new so, year so yeah happy holidays happy so new better year than this, than this one yeah yeah. Uh, just keep on rendering and see you here yeah yeah bye bye